Hello there, welcome back to my channel. In the last episode, we have worked on the product requirements and some part of the system design. So, so far, uh, what we have covered, we just went through the product requirements and we have added the use cases and we have introduced the system design. We have discussed what are the functional and non-functional and data storage requirements are there. And finally, we have uh, added the basic architecture of the application where you can see uh, all the elements we have added just for a, a kind of basic understanding how or what exactly the application will be look like in the basic foundation level. After that, we have discussed about the text, text selection where we have selected to go with the serverless architecture and the, over the uh, server. So um, I have already mentioned like what are the explanation or what are the pros and cons of the server and the serverless. And finally, we have added the application structure. So where we found the microservices, what are the microservices we are going to add this uh, for this uh, application. So it depends on the microservices, we need to design our database as well as. So first of all, let's figure out what are the expectations we have from our database. I'm going to add a kind of element right here. Now we will find out the, what are the expectations uh, from our database or what are the entity it will be. And after that, we will decide whether we need to go with the SQL or NoSQL. That will decide. First, let's uh, add um, the expectation. Perfect. So these are the things we need to have in our database. So let's figure out what are the uh, what are the entities it will belong to which service exactly. So now the create account uh, it may be uh, for for buyer or uh, buyer or seller. It will be belongs to user, right? User and contact details it will be for user as well as address also it will be for user. Payment methods also for a user, and shopping card and card items. Um, these are things it will be from our our user, right? So these are these are the entities it will belongs to a user, and the order transaction and the shipping. These are the things it will be uh, it will be belongs to our our transaction service because uh, transaction service can have uh, the the transaction data in terms of like what kind of payment it, it is and what are the payment logs exactly and what kind of order or what are the order items it will be it will be inside of this uh, this transaction service and transaction service will be having the shipping uh, information as well as products and the deal service will be having the category products and deals so these are the minimum information we are going to keep it right here so category and product product can have like the the stock information as well as stock information as well as and deals can have the uh, advertisement, right? So this is not a kind of uh, B2C model. So we are not uh, going to focus much more on the product uh, service uh, because this is this specific product going to be created by uh, the user only, right? There is no any kind of uh, super admin or maybe admin user from the portal. Uh, the another thing is like li live chat and participant. So these are the two uh, uh, entities going to be needed just for uh, our live chat because uh, user service will be having these are the entities and product service products and deal will be having these are the entities and uh, transaction will be having our transaction stuff but notification is a kind of service which is not required any kind of database because it will be simply a kind of third party service which is it will be while while we will be triggering something from any service to send the notification send the communication then instantly it will it will receive the uh, event from uh, maybe from SSQ or some other way around, then it will get the job done and it will notify again uh, to other service, right? So here there is no any database required for this one. So uh, these are four services going to be needed, the database stuff, right? All right, so we got our entities for a while for the services. And now let's, uh, let's go with the discussion of the, the database stuff and how we will design our database, right? First, let's uh, let's find out the what kind of database we can use use for uh, our services, right? Because we have microservices, so it's it's uh, a bit flexibilities here. You can use any kind of database uh, for your services, 
by keep eye on the requirement of the services, we can go with either SQL or NoSQL. So that will define, depend on the use cases of the services. Um, let's add a diagram right here. We're going to add uh, this one. So this one going to be SQL. So let's put a color here and we're going to add one more. This is going to be uh, NoSQL. All right, perfect. So what are the services we can put inside the SQL? Let's figure out user service will be having the structured data, right? Maybe you can have uh, user ID, password, contact number, address, or whatever the data, it will be structured data. So for user service, you can fairly select for the SQL, right? So user, user service, let's change the save. Perfect, this is cool. Now, uh, another thing is like we can keep uh, this transaction service can have structured data where because transaction can have one ID in terms of like you can see here, a transaction can have the order, order can have a certain order ID and the reference to that specific card item or uh, shopping card item, right? That's for shopping card number and shopping card number can have card item. So this order uh, entity can have a structured data. So, and a transaction also can have like certain amount of data, which is going to be transaction number, uh, card number, or maybe transaction the, the payment log or whatever it is, we can just keep it as as, uh, as well. And another thing is the shipping information. Shipping information can maybe shipping from, uh, I mean, from customer to shipping to customer and certain address or PIN number or the status or something. So these are some kind of the structure data we can keep it here as well as. So let's uh, figure out uh, the transaction service. You can keep it as um, SQL database. So. transaction service. This is going to be from here. Cool. And now uh, we, we just figure out this, these are the two services going to be used, SQL. SQL we are, maybe we can use MySQL or maybe uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, we, will, we will decide it in upcoming, upcoming lectures. So um, right now, these two services are done. Now it's left like products and deals and live chat. So a live chat can have anything. It is, you can say it's going to be like maybe maybe semi-structured. Uh, sometimes maybe user can have some messages, some other things. Sometimes maybe it can have a picture as well as. So we don't wanna take a risk of like to keep the live chat data in the structured data way structured way so we are, we are we have decided to go with this live chat for for uh i mean no sql right so let's add right here uh the service name is live chat service all right let's change the shape as well as right here okay this one's going to be like this another one we're going to add here uh, the product service, why we have decided to go with the NoSQL because product can have any kind of product and maybe uh, and you can see here uh, in this image, we have uh, like e-bikes, right? E-bikes can have a different description. The mobile phone can have different description. Maybe electronics items can have different uh, description. So uh, we should have to be careful in terms of like what kind of information it could have. So it depends on the, the requirement of the specific uh, service, specific items, you know, we, we should have to decide accordingly. So this is the, this is pretty clear here for the products and that products, deals and the service can have a different, different uh, requirement. So we, sh we, there is no, we cannot predict the schema of that specific uh, stuff, right? So uh, it will be better to go with the, uh, the schema list in terms of like NoSQL rather than having structured data. Uh, so this is the thing we are uh, going to assign right here. Let's uh, add the products and products deals. Let's 
let's make it correct a bit like this all right so now we got a clear understanding of which service is going to be used what kind of database it is right so uh, database selection is it's up to you but uh, again by looking at the use cases and the use cases of uh, read and write of the database we should have to select carefully the database uh, maybe you can go with the NoSQL or maybe SQL uh, RDBMS whatever it is right so in our case we right now we got a kind of clear understanding of this one uh, let's figure out the, the entities and the relations so first of all let's add a table here so I'm going to add a table this is going to be our user all right and the first uh, attribute it will be like right so this is our user table user table can have user id which is going to be a primary key right and after that user can have a phone email password and user type so these are the things exactly it's needed for the user now our create account uh, the create account section is done this is going to be our user and second one is like our contact details so contact details what are the contact details we can have the contact details also it is included here you can say the phone number and email we are just keeping out all right so these are the two points it's covered now the third point is like our address we don't have address field right here and this is going to be a kind of a dirty practice if we are keeping our, our all address in the user table so let's create a new table right right here uh, i'm going to add one more table this is going to be user All right, so now we have user address table. User address table is consist of ID, user ID, and address at line number one, address line two, city, post, and country. So here you can see the ID is the primary key and user ID is the parent key, okay? So this parent key is coming from here, right? Let's connect this one right here. We're going to connect this one, perfect. Looking at this, the address is also done. The third, is, third one is we need to add the payment method as well as because while user is going to be make some payment we need to store their card also or if it's a kind of seller then we need to collect their banking information so uh, once the transaction is done they should have to receive their payout as well as right so let's add the payment method uh, uh, the table also All right, so this is our user payment table. So let's connect the, the primary key also from here. User table will consist of the primary key and user ID will be the foreign key, which is uh, we will use from here to keep reference from the user. And the, it will be having bank account number and the the payment, payment type, what kind of payment it is, right? So let's connect this one with primary key. Perfect. Now, our payment method is we have added now we need to add the this shopping cart right and, and this shopping cart will be a different table let's add one more table here this is going to be a shopping cart all right so this is our shopping cart table where we will keep like id as a kind of uh, primary key and user id we are just keeping as a parent key so let's connect our user id from here shopping cart is added now let's create one more table this is called card items because one shopping cart have the multiple card items right so all those card items has to be uh, there because in the shopping cart we cannot keep like as a kind of area or something else um, first of all we will be will be designed our database in a structured way and later on we will be normalized according to a no sql way while we are splitting out everything uh, for our microservices right right before isolate the database so let's uh, add the shopping cart item also here so these are all needed for the card items right so let's uh, mm, let's connect the shopping cart id from here to here right this has to connect to here and this product id it will come from the product table right and the, the there is no any user going to be involved because all the card items belongs to a specific shopping cart and th that specific shopping cart is belongs to user right so we no need to mention any kind of the user incorporation right here in the card items 
But another things we need to create, which is called uh, the or uh, the products, right? Now uh, for for the products, we need to have right here the first the category one. So let's create the category. Let's create our product table because uh, product table needed the category, right? So this one here, and this uh, category ID has to be connected right here. So let's connect to the category ID. And one more, the seller ID. This is going to be FK, parent key, because it will be connected to the user as well as, because while we are creating the product, then this product has to belongs to uh, someone, right? Someone in terms of some seller. So user can, here you can see this user type field. So it can be buyer or seller, depends on that, the, this product, while we are adding the product, that user ID will be referred to this seller ID. Cool. So now uh, add this one, this product uh, primary key to here. Uh, we're going to add this connection right here. Perfect. Now we have we got the clearly the uh, the product connection also in the card item. Uh, what are the things exactly it's needed right now? Uh, category edit, product edit, right? Stock is not required, okay? Because we have added the stock right here. Uh, yeah, stock in it. And now um, deals going to be needed because while we are creating the product, then we should have to adver advertise this one as well as right. So to advertise it, uh, we need to create the deal table as well as. So let's create the deal table. Perfect. Then specific this deal ID will be FK, foreign key, and this is let's connect with this one. Cool. Now uh, our whole series of the user experience is connected, right? The user will be having address, user can have user payment, user can have a shopping card, a shopping card can have shopping card items, and card items can have the products, products, uh, these products this belongs to category, and these products can have a deal as well as, right? So this is correct. Now let's move forward to the order section. So while, while we are, uh, user is logging into the portal, then user can order it, right? So where we will be adding this one, here, let's say. Now, this order has to be uh, connected from somewhere. Let's connect from the user. It will be connect from our primary key. And this order uh, is belongs to a shopping cart. This is also need to be connect from here. Shopping cart ID. Perfect. Now, this order can have uh, a transaction, right? And a shipping also, shipping information also. This transaction, let's create the transaction table. Then we can connect this payment method stuff from here, but uh, uh, this user payment is not belongs to the the, uh, uh, the make payment. It is it is belongs to for seller only while the seller will receive the payout uh, at that time, we are going to use the, the user payment. Okay, so this payment method maybe is a net banking or maybe card or maybe PayPal or something else. So uh, another thing thing is your status and after write the payment log. It will be a kind of uh, JSON data which is we are going to store in the transaction uh, table, right? Now, uh, let's connect the uh, user ID also here and order ID also here because this order ID is needed. So let's connect to this one to here. This one. And after that, this user ID, user ID also need to connect from here. <coughs> All right, so now we have uh, the transaction table as well as. Let's add uh, the shipping table also because once the order has been successfully placed, then seller need to send this specific item to buyer as well as, right? Then the shipping table will be holding the information regarding the shipping. Uh, let's add this order ID here. 
because this shipping uh, this shipping information is belongs to some order right so let's add this order ID perfect now this customer ID also going to be needed because this customer ID uh, is a kind of uh, uh, the buyer which is going to be connect from here all right and and the same way it will be connected the user table also uh, with the seller ID because seller seller will be the seller and the customer ID will be the buyer so it will be meaningful like if we keep its buyer ID buyer ID right buyer ID and seller ID and why we are keeping this shipping address right here we, we could have uh, keep the directly this um, this user ID right because uh, uh, there is some circumstance well uh, people can make the the specific order on the time and like it was a different address maybe after some time they have changed the address then on the time of adding this order you know the address whatever address they have added that is we need to keep track right so that is going to be safe on the on the time of uh, shipping the, this specific address is going to be used for the shipping only right so that's why we are just keeping the shipping address bill right here okay Cool. Now, since uh, rest of all we have covered here, only two things are needed. This is called live chat and participants. Let's uh, create that two table as well as. So uh, this particip this participant table is going to be a kind of table. While right after created the live chat session, you know, then the participant can join here. So we can see like you know who is sending what kind of messages or maybe when he has connected or something like that way but another table also going to be needed right before the participant uh let's see um, here what we can add because while we are creating a kind of chat application then uh, certainly a session going to be created automatically right so depends on that session you know the other participants can join that this specific chat room so that's why we need to create this one and it can have a configuration in terms of like maximum how many user can join this specific room or uh, what is the current user count depends on that we, we need to just do uh, all this functionality so let's uh, add this specific ID right here uh, this one will be going here primary key and this user ID will become from here this table all right so now uh, we can see uh, the whole database structure we have designed accordingly uh, I am I'm not keeping the data type of the specific fields because we are not sure like what kind of database we are going to use for our, our SQL and for NoSQL maybe for NoSQL we can use the MongoDB or maybe DynamoDB for SQL maybe we can go with uh, MySQL or maybe PostgreSQL uh, it will be we will decide in upcoming lectures cool now let's move forward to the uh, the service endpoints what are the service endpoints we can we can have for our different different services right so let's add a um, add a kind of element right here now in the service endpoint we can we can just to create a kind of client here and API Gateway can have uh, the, our services. The first service will be our user service. So, so let's um, change the shape. This one is going to be our user service. So what are the connections going to be happen from here? The first one is going to be our our user. This is going to be user so user. Right here, this one will be our root. So while we are not putting any kind of endpoint or any kind of uh, parameters right here, then we can directly access the products. And here, this one is going to be our transaction. All right, so this is going to be our WebSocket. So these are the services, microservices we have right now, right? There are five microservices. Yeah, notification service we will be will be keeping separately because notification service will be not reachable from the directly client. It will be it will be interrelated. That's why we don't need any kind of endpoints here. Perfect. 
So now let's uh, explore the what are the endpoints it will be required per, per sign up. This one maybe uh, we can keep like this. Let's add like this. It's going to be sign up. Sign up, right? So here the sign up will be kind of post post method, right? Then uh, another things will be login. This is going to be an again uh, a login. Login will be post, post. This is going to be verify, verify. Verify all the post. Verify all the post. And let's add a little bit more. And we can have our user profile as well as profile as well as and we can have our view and add card. And view an add card. Because we need to add the bank account as well as right. So cool. So user service can have uh, these are the endpoints where the user can sign up, user can log in, user can verify, and user can user, user can see their profile or um, they can just uh, create their profile. And maybe you can put uh, put as well as right here because at any time they can update their profile as well as. And view to a view and add card, they can uh, they can create the card and they can they can edit their card. And after that, they they can do the ad payment as well as right. So these are the things. These are the endpoints we are just keeping for our user service. Now let's provide to the uh, the product service. Let's make some room right here. So in the product service also, we are going to add first the view product. And this is going to be our uh, uh, direct slash and and. ID because we can see all the products or a single product also right so that is that's why actually I'm putting like this way and we can we can keep it as a get right the view product view product or products perfect now the second endpoint we can we can keep it as create create come on so we will be giving some limitations for the category also as an example if some user uh, some of the seller has already created some category and you cannot create the same category and we are not giving the delete options from here okay you cannot delete the category because if you are going to delete the category maybe it will be interrupted by someone else also also right so uh, this delete category so that we shouldn't have to keep it here Okay, create, create and update, create, update. Uh, yeah, create, update and get category. Get categories. All right. So this one is going to be uh, just like this as well as category like this. Okay, we can have a multiple category and one single category as well as now uh, the next endpoint is going to be our create product. So let's uh, so we, we can normalize the uh, other required uh, endpoints. If in future, if we can see like one more endpoint is going to be needed, then we can add it right here. But for for a profile, we are just try to figure out what are the service endpoints it would have to be for each and every service. So we can have a kind of clear understanding like in this, this is how uh, it should have to be in the APIs 
and uh, these are the point endpoints we need to expose uh, from, from from this service right so now let's say uh, this one's going to be our our specific ID and it will be our put and delete delete now uh, yeah the create product and edit product can have one common uh, uh, common third-party call also which is going to be uh, we can upload the image right upload images this is we we need to do it because uh, we are not keeping our images in, in the, inside these services we will, we will be keeping our uh, images inside of the object stores which is we have added right here in the database uh, section right here maybe here right in object stores so um, yeah this is this is perfect now one more endpoint is going to be needed for, for products that is called uh, let's duplicate this one This is called deals. 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 It can be mm, ID as well as ID as well as it can be our our post post put and delete. Right. So these are the these are the endpoints it could it could have for the deals as well as. Perfect. So now uh, um, these are the two microservices. We got the endpoints. Now let's move forward with these two. So let's add this one here. This transaction can have our create order. So um, then uh, another endpoints can have, which is going to be our cancel, cancel order, cancel order also. Um, yeah. Now what we can do, uh, we can we can add one more endpoint. This is going to be our uh, make payment. Yeah, absolutely. It will be a post method. Payment method that post, post. Right, and last one going to be our shipping. And it will be our post and get. All right, perfect. So we got the uh, endpoints for our services. All right. Then live chat, we can add like uh, the the join and connect and disconnect. Perfect. Now finally, we figured out the service endpoints for our services. So each and every services have their own service endpoints. And in the next episode, we are going to implement all those stuff and we are going to create the, all the microservices. And um, you can see right now, we have a pretty clear understanding on database side as well as. So what are the uh, services is going to be used the structured data and what are the services is going, going to be used non-structured data as well as. So uh, by keep eye on the tables, you can see uh, the relations between the, all, the, all the tables are pretty, pretty clear right now. And uh, now uh, upcoming things like the challenge is uh, how we can maintain all these relations uh, across the distributed architecture. I'm sure you, you have a plenty of questions, but certainly uh, I can assure you as soon as we are, uh, we are moving forward to the, with the episodes, all the doubts will be getting clear uh, properly. We are going to use uh, distributed architecture in terms of like in the across the serverless way. So it's an app service will be having their own, isol own isolated database. And only the meaningful data we are just to try to keep and whether uh, it can have a kind of cross relations or something, we will we will figure out with, the, with a kind of loosely coupled way, right? 
Okay, so uh, this is all for today. And thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you like this tutorial. If you have not subscribed my channel, uh, please subscribe it. If you think like this is uh, a very good series, write a comment. Yeah, and cross to other people as well as by sharing this tutorial. And I'll be I'll be happy to see you in upcoming episodes. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.